Hi, and welcome to Allen High School's discussion of Le Chatelier's principle at the APIBHL1 level. Um, what I'm doing is a brief introductory video geared towards an inquiry that we're going to be doing in class, kiddos. And I, and I think this will help you understand what's going on at the molecular level a little bit better. But I want to clarify a couple things. For one, this is a little bit of a simplification. I'm going to link kinetics and equilibrium pretty tightly here, and I think that's going to be one of our big wins in understanding what's going on at the molecular level. However, that link between kinetics and equilibrium gets really complicated very quickly, especially if we get into mechanisms and many multi-steps. So bear that in mind. It's a little bit of a simplification, but it will definitely lead you in the right direction in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Now our goal here is um, to determine the driving force and the direction. So the driving force and the direction needed to reestablish. That's the key. The answer is always going to be what is going to have to occur, what is occurring in order to reestablish equilibrium after we stress it. And, and it can be stressed by adding substances, removing substances, changing volumes, changing um, pressures by changing the volumes, possibly by adding a catalyst. We'll explore that and also especially by changing temperatures. Now for all of the stresses, when we accept one, when we establish equilibrium, we're going to reestablish the same K. In other words, the same relative value. Now the exact concentrations won't be the same. It'd be like comparing one half as two fourths. The exact values aren't the same on top and bottom, but they both represent one half, and that's what K is. I know that's a little simplistic, but hopefully that helps. Now the one exception is going to be temperature. With temperature, we're going to be reestablishing a new K value because K is dependent on temperature. But we're still going to be able to describe the shift towards the original K or a new K if it's temperature. And that's our goal here. All right, so let's take a look at that. And I have charts, and what I want the charts to be able to describe for us is, it, I want the charts to be able to provide the logic and the terminology that you need to justify the questions about Le Chatelier's principle. So this is the first chart. I'm going to go over it with you. But uh, before I do, I want to help you understand what we're talking about in terms of collision theory and Q. So this, these are the charts. And again, they're to give you the words and the terminology and the logic, and more importantly, the deeper molecular understanding of Le Chatelier's principle. Now, we saw charts like this in the past. And what we're going to graph on this side, we did when we saw kinetics. This is going to be molarity. And this is time. And the first one we're looking at is 2NO2 going to N2O4. So over time, we're going to lose reactant. And I, I'm, I don't know what the K is here. I'm not going to look it up, so I'm just going to make up a relative amount here. Um, to, just to make my point. We're going to gain product, but we're going to gain product at half the rate that we lose reactant. I don't know if K is greater than 1 or less than 1. Okay, but the important point is here, we're going to reach equilibrium. So before this, we have a Q values, but once the rate of the forward is equal to the rate of the reverse, we're at equilibrium. All right? Now what happens in Le Chatelier's principle is we're going to stress that equilibrium. And the, the stress that I'm going to go over with you is a stress of adding 
some NO2. So at this point here, we're going to inject NO2. So my NO2 concentration is going to go up. All right? Now, if my NO2, so here's my stress. I added NO2. So now, let's think about collision theory. If I added NO2, that means that I'm going to have an increased number of collisions of reactants. That means that my rate forward is going to increase. So we'll increase that rate and eventually as we now go to equilibrium, so that initial increase in rate, eventually my reactants will go down, but look what happens to products in response to this. Eventually my products, I'm, I'm consuming reactant and I'm forming product, right? So my products will go up and we'll reach equilibrium again. Please don't measure this exactly. These Ks have to be exact. Those ratios have to be exact. I'm just trying to make the point is that because the rate forward increased, that means to reestablish equilibrium, to get back to an equilibrium, we're now here, this is Q, because we're non-equilibrium right now, and we're going to reestablish K. All right, we were at K, we stressed it, we're at Q, which is any non-equilibrium. We need to get back to K. We increase the rate forward. That means to get back, we're going to consume reactant because the rate increased. And we're going to form product. Now, what is often said here is that this is a shift to the right. I don't like that very well because I feel like it's a phrase that really bypasses some understanding. And so I like to say, you know, it shifts to consume reactant and form product. Okay? So now let's take a look at the answers to this. So our driving force, remember, was to consume reactant and form product. So NO2 is added. So what happens here? And, and my suggestion is you work this, circle these in pencil to start with, then go check the key, correct your work, and highlight it so we can see it better. So as NO2 is added, because we have more NO2, we're going to see an initial increase in reactants, uh, collision among reactants. That's going to be our driving force for our shift. So that's our driving force for our shift. Because we have more collisions amongst reactions, the rate of the forward is going to increase. Now, initially, at the instant, at, we're going to have see similar collisions among our products. I, I meant to take that word initially out, and I forgot, but I think it's helpful. It is initially they're going to be similar. Now, over time, we are going to start seeing more collisions. But in terms of the driving force, it's the increasing collision among reactants. So initially, the rate of the reverse is similar. Now, the concentration of products as uh, equilibrium is established is going to increase because our forward rate is increasing. Our reactants will decrease. That means to reach equilibrium, we're going to consume reactant and form product, which is a shift right. Okay, so that's the argument using kinetics. We can also use an argument using Q. Let me do that. Um, let's take a look at Q. So K was equal to NO2, excuse me, K is equal to N2O4, if I made a mistake earlier, let's correct that, NO2 squared. Okay, so K is equal to that. Once we increase our concentration of NO2, we shift away from K 
and it becomes Q. Since we increase the denominator, that means Q ends up being less, Q ends up being less than K. So if Q is less than K, we have a driving force to form product. So we get the same type of situation. Concentrate Q is decreased relative to K. It's less than K. So we're to, we'll have a driving force to uh, make more product, consume reactant, and so your final answer would be this, and it would shift to the right. A lot of people, if you put Q on the left-hand side, do you notice that the greater than, uh, less than sign will open up towards the direction that it shifts? Now, I also have a pencil trick I think I showed you in the other videos. If not, I'll show you in class. So for now, good luck with this inquiry. I'm, I'm not going to be there this year with this class, but hopefully I'll be there in future years. But for this year, this is signing off.